some of you will be aware that I've been doing a number of uh, webinars over the last couple of years on uh, particular uh, groups of aquatic plants. And, um, uh, and sort of bit by bit tackling some of the different, different groups, some of the more difficult groups particularly, but also some of the, the easier groups. Um, so uh, this is uh, <coughs> another, uh, another one of, of, of that series. Um, and uh, it's, quite, it's a slightly easier group, uh, basically the spiky rosette. Um, now, uh, the best approach to aquatic plants is to, uh, at the first instance, is to divide them up into uh, a number of life form groups. Um, uh, and uh, the, there are seven of these, uh, which, I, which I use when I'm sort of talking about aquatic plants. Um, and today, uh, uh, so they're, they're sort of basically uh, based on the shape of the leaves. The stringy ones just have linear leaves. Uh, the feathery ones are, have divided leaves and the strappy ones are like ribbons um, uh, and, and so on. But uh, so I'm just going to talk uh, specifically about spiky rosettes uh, uh, today. Um, uh, so these are sort of things that are growing on the bottom of the water, uh, usually sort of usually completely underwater, but some of them are exposed on, on the edges uh, and they form these rosettes of stiff uh, linear or, or sometimes a little bit expanded leaves. And uh, there's a, it's quite a, a neat group. Uh, and if you can sort of stick them in that group, you've already, already cut, cut it down <coughs> to about 12 options. Um, and we'll just have a look at the, the things to look at uh, uh, to, to separate the, those options. Um, the uh, one thing about this, this group particularly uh, is the huge range of, uh, in terms of uh, um, genetic connection, um, uh, the, the, the same life form has been produced in, uh, by vastly different uh, taxonomic groups. Uh, uh, so you've got here sort of five completely different uh, families and uh, uh, different parts of the flora, all taking much the same sort of shape. Uh, and it means that uh, uh, when it comes to books, it, it's uh, it, it, the, the sort of normal wildflower guides, which are often usually divided by families and things, aren't terribly helpful. I mean, it has all of these in, but you'll find them sort of dotted right throughout the book. Um, uh, so uh, uh, the... Uh, probably a, a better book uh, to, to use uh, is British Water Plants if you're just beginning on aquatic plants, and it divides them up in, in that in this way that I've been talking about uh, 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 into uh, sort of leaf form groups. Um, but there are some copies there on the table if anybody wants to have a look at them. Uh, uh, another very useful book, uh, and there are one or two uh, that are particularly relevant to, uh, to the group we're talking about today. Uh, in the plant crib, there are sort of details, uh, information about particularly quill worts, uh, but there's also a, a spiky rosettes, um, sort of, uh, a, 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 a bit on, specifically on this group. Um, and another book that is quite useful for if you're looking at aquatic plants is uh, Richard Lansdowne's uh, book on, it's, it's called River Plants, Riverine Plants, uh, but it covers pretty much all aquatics um, because there's a, a, a lot of overlap between standing waters and, and flowing waters. Um, but also uh, what I've uh, uh, done over the years uh, is I've developed some keys uh, these are all available on the Aquatic Plants website, uh, project website. Um, uh, and th this is the one for uh, the spiky rosettes. And they're intended to be on A4, so you can laminate them and take them out in the fields. Uh, and I'll, I'll have some uh, with us uh, when, we're, when we're going out. Um, so the, the group, uh, there are four main characters that... that uh, are uh, used for uh, identifying them. The leaf shape, cro the cross section of the leaf, 
cross-sectioned leaf is particularly important. Uh, root color is helpful. Uh, and there are some species that uh, instead of just having a linear leaf, they have a slightly expanded blade. And just to show you some, some of the examples, you've got um, uh, uh, allwort, which is very sort of uh, long pointed leaves, whereas water lobelia has quite squat blunt leaves. Uh, and that's sort of, sort of so that's a uh, first character that, that's particularly useful. Um, the uh, cross section is also very useful uh, because uh, particularly quillwort has four tubes, the leaves made up of four tubes. So if you just break it open, look down the end, it's usually quite clear to see. And there are some examples here that you could have a look at. Water lobelia has two tubes. Um, uh, and uh, uh, the common one, the, the shawlweed, Lysorella, uh, is like looking at a sponge uh, when you look down, uh, down the cross section. So the, the sort of the most common uh, spiky rosettes that you're going to come across, uh, that's a, a very useful character for separating. Um, root color is, is a, an additional character that can help. Uh, simply that the uh, roots of isoetes uh, tend to be brown, whereas most of the others, they tend to be white or off-white. Uh, so it's, it's just an extra character that, that's useful. Uh, and I'll show you some roots of... of um, um, uh, pipe wet, which has very odd roots. Um, uh, and also sort of in this group, there are a number of, of, of species that have uh, a slightly expanded blades to the leaves rather than just the straight linear uh, leaf. Um, and that, that again, a useful character for separating. But if we tackle with the ones with that have just had the linear leaves to start with, um, uh, and just sort of go through them. Um, there are essentially five species to think about. Uh, the, much the most common uh, is Litterella, the shawweed. Um, uh, has parallel sided leaves, uh, which are quite abruptly pointed. Uh, cross section sponge like, as I just said a moment ago. Uh, it's one of the few that has uh, stolons. Uh, you can see here the, the uh, they're not always present, but they're quite often present. Um, and it'll creep along, uh, and see little white shoots uh, over, the, over the gravels at the edge. Um, and, uh, oh, uh, oh yeah, white, whitish roots. Um, it does look rather different on land uh, from in the water. But let's go back to that. It's quite a fleshy thing when it's very in, underwater. Uh, but when it's exposed out on the mud, it becomes a much sort of thinner thing, but it's still the same, same plant. And it will only flower when it's out of the water. I think there are some flowers in there, but they're not very easy to see. Um, so what's the lobelia? Uh, another one with parallel sided leaves and very rather blunt bits. Um, uh, and nice, uh, sort of quite sti uh, very stiff leaves. Uh, often quite curled um, and, and very white roots. Uh, but the most obvious thing, well, when it's flowering, there's no problem. It sticks up out of the water and it has pretty little uh, lilac colored flowers. Um, but uh, a lot of, a lot of veg uh, 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 aquatic plants are done vegetatively and the flowers are just a bonus when they're, when they're here. Um, uh, so you break it open, it's quite obviously made up of two tubes, like big tubes. Um, it's also unusual uh, for an aquatic plant is that it produces a little bit of latex when you break it open. So you'll see a little sort of white uh, um, uh, coming out of the leaves when you break it open. Um, cool rats, uh, uh, now with the previous two have quite sort of parallel sided uh, and sort of ultimately quite uh, abruptly pointed leaves. Uh, that we've got three that have very long tapered leaves. So these are sort of widest at the base and, and then sort of gradually taper the sort of long drawn out bit. Um, uh, and Quillette's nice and easy. It's got a cross section of four tubes, uh, which are uh, usually quite easy to see when you break it open. Um, they also have this expanded base uh, to the leaf uh, uh, and 
inside those that little expanded bit, um, there's a little there's a little packet uh, which uh, you'll find spores in, and there are actually two types of spores: there's the the, um, the uh, microspores and the megaspores. Uh, and the megaspores I will come to in a minute because they're quite a, a useful they're a useful character because there are two species of colorants. Um, uh, the other thing is that uh, the uh, uh, the base of the leaf is often quite translucent, uh, so you can usually see the cell structure of the cross walls uh, uh, in 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 that area at the base of the leaf, which you don't see in, in things like shawlweed um, uh, and water um, Now the spores are the best way of telling apart. There are two species of um, uh, of isoeces. Uh, there is a, a terrestrial one in, that you get in southwest England, uh, which are not. Uh, I won't go there for a moment. Uh, but there are two aquatic species: there's uh, Echinospora uh, and Lacustris. Uh, and to reliably identify those, you need to have a look at these spores. So they need to be fertile, um, at, at which uh, they usually fertile for most of the, most of the summer, certainly the later part of the summer. Uh, and the tip for this, for looking at the spores, is to actually break open the packet and let them dry. If you let them dry, uh, they go all hard and chalky, and you can see the structures on the surface much, much easier. If you have them wet, then the water sort of fills in the gaps bet between the, uh, the, the, the ornamentation. And what you're looking at uh, is the Echinospora looks like a hedgehog, a kind of spore that's it's a, where it gets its name from. So it, the spores are a bit, a bit smaller, but they're also co completely covered by little spiky spines. Uh, whereas Lacustris, which is what uh, is the most common one, uh, you have this rather sort of lumpy surface, sort of gnarled, uh, lumpy surface, but they're, they're quite blunt, rounded uh, bumps on, on the surface. Uh, there is a hybrid. Um, uh, but and the the main character of that is that the spores are not properly formed. Um, uh, I have never seen it. I wouldn't know quite what to look for. But, but uh, if you do find a, if you do look at the spores and find that they're malformed, like particularly that sort of dumbbell shape, um, then you might well have the, have the hybrid. Um, also, quite an unusual thing is that there are. Very rarely you find viviparous forms with, uh, with the spores actually germinating on the parent plant and, and, and forming little plantlets. Um, uh, it's uh, in Lake Windermere, is the, about the only place I know of it, but it, it's worth keeping an eye out for. It might, it might well, uh, the, the viviparous form might turn up in other places too. Um, now, uh, the, there is always the question, can you separate um, Lacustris and Echinospora uh, vegetatively without checking the spores? And basically the answer is no. But there are some things that you can look out for that help you to spot that it's a plant that's worth taking back and checking. Um, one is uh, that the, the way that the um, the uh, leaves bend. Echinospora tends to bend at the bottom and then be quite straight, whereas uh, Lacustris tends to be uh, much more sort of curved throughout the length of the leaf. Um, and it means that when you're sort of looking down on the uh, on, on Echinospora and just looking down in the water, it often looks a bit more starfish like. Um, and it tends to be a lighter color too. Uh, the, Lacustris is, is, is often dark green, whereas Echinospora tends to be a sort of lighter yellowy green. Um, but particularly Lacustris is hugely variable. You'll get some that are completely straight and, uh, and some that are bendy, and, and, and uh, really you do always have to go back to the spores to check them. But it's just there, are, there is a look to the Echinospora that you can get your eye for. Uh, uh, sort of pick it out uh, because um, it kind of spoil it because it, it 
it, it's it's much less common, but it's probably overlooked too. Um, it does prefer softer sediments as well. It tends to be in, in more sheltered bays, whereas the custrus tends to be out in the uh, sort of more stony parts. Um, <coughs> the fourth uh, widespread one in this group, again, it's got tapered leaves, uh, is all that, uh, Subalaria aquatica, uh, which is a very spiky one. Um, uh, with leaves that are tapered uh, right from the base um, and uh, to, uh, with a, a long drawn out tip. Um, and uh, if you are looking for it in underwater, you normally what you spot first uh, is because uh, you're sort of looking in, in amongst lots of other rosettes of trees and hoarders and things. Uh, but it has these uh, little stems. Uh, a bit like uh, ruffler uh, uh, whitlow grass uh, in appearance with little sort of seeds on it because it's it's a member of the cabbage family um, uh, and, it, and it has these little crest like seeds uh, and that's probably what you're going to spot first of all when you're looking for it um, and it is something that needs to be looked for when, when we were looking at um, the sort of refined rate, rates of, uh, in Ireland uh, in, in the Atlas the refine rate break for subularia was really quite low. It was something like 10% of the old records that have been refined since, since 2000. Um, so it, it is something that, uh, and it's, it, it's, it, it's quite often, um, I think it's, it's strongholders in sort of Kerry uh, uh, and, and maybe in Connemara too. Um, so it's in areas where it's, it should be still there. Uh, they're not places that are under high pressure, um, but I suspect that it's being overlooked. Um, but uh, so it's well worth keeping an eye out. Um, but uh, again, if you're looking at the cross section, it's a completely solid cross section and has the flattened uh, top top solution. Um, now, the, the other one in this group is really quite a rare thing. Uh, it's called pipewort. Um, and you have some really quite good populations in, in certain parts of the west and northwest of Ireland. Um, and it's a very odd looking thing. Um, it, it has large quantities of roots. Um, and they're rather worm like. They're actually sort of little, sort of lots of cells. Made, made up of lots of cells end to end, and they look really rather like worm like. Um, uh, and it has these big inflated uh, cells. Uh, and in fact, it's got so much uh, air in it that what tends to happen is you get a patch of it, uh, and it'll start lifting off the whole turf, will start lifting off, float up to the surface, and then it'll float around the lake uh, and then sort of. Uh, the land somewhere else on uh, another part of the lake, and the, the roots will go down, and the anchor is growing. So uh, it does tend to grow in quite large quantity in, in, in sites where it does occur, but it is a very restricted uh, uh, distribution. Um, it has uh, quite sort of again, it's quite sort of tapered, pointed leaves, um, but uh, the, the roots are going to jump out at you and. Uh, say so that's weird, um, uh, and it does produce flowers. There are little sort of uh, sticks that stick up out of the water with a little sort of cluster of, of, of flowers, um, sort of rather greyish flowers that, that uh, stick up out of the water. But uh, those can rise uh, a meter or two from 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 the bottom of the lake uh, up to the surface. So they can, you can get some really quite long. Flowering stems. Um, so we move on to ones that usually have a, a little bit more expanded, though, rather than just being completely parasited or, or tapered. They, they have a bit of expansion to, to leaf. Um, and one of the main uh, groups that you're going to come across uh, are members of Elizmus and, um, and Sagittaria. Uh, and these are all variations of Elizabeth. Elizabeth, when it starts, 
uh, when it first germinates, just looks a bit like that. Um, and then it gets sort of start getting wider leaves together, and then it produces uh, floating leaves on the surface, and only then will it come out of the water. But it does mean that if you sort of pick out something like that uh, as the water is, uh, that can sort of thing. Putting that next to the big water plantain growing out of the water can just to be a, a little bit of a, of a, a step to think about. Uh, so they're uh, quite flat leaved, they're quite sort of translucent. Uh, there are all of these ones in, in this group are pretty difficult to separate at this stage. So your best bet is to actually look around and uh, see if there's more mature plants of something. So if, you, if you've got one of those and you see a, a nice water plantain sticking out of the water, you, you can match the two. Um, but on their own, uh, you just see one of those uh, separating which alisma it is, uh, is is really a non-starter. There are, however, a couple of characters to look out for, which you can separate off. Um, and the first one is that Bordelia has a very strong <coughs> smell of coriander. I've got a bit on the table there. You can smell it. It's quite a strong uh, and, and obvious smell, although... As with all smells, some people don't get it. It's, 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 different people's perceptions of smells can vary quite surprisingly. Um, but for most people, it's, it's quite a clear smell of coriander. Uh, but if, if they're flying, then it's much easier. You can uh, uh, build a, a spray of just the three or four flowers, and they're bigger flowers than the, than the other water plantains. Um, but uh, uh, <coughs> the other character to look out for uh, is uh, that Luranian Maytans um, uh, uh, produces stellars. Most of the Elizabeths and things don't have stellars, uh, but Luranian does. It's a floating water plant, which is a, a rare plant in Ireland, a few lakes in, in Connemara. Um, uh, if you find those stellars, then you know it must be Luranian. Except there is a form of Bordelia called, uh, which may even be a different species, and it's certainly in, this, uh, in the Kalani Lakes. Uh, and and it, it, there is a Bordelia that has stolons and has a creeping, creeping stem. Uh, and how you would separate that from uh, there is this question about. I'm not entirely sure if it has the same strong coriander smell as the, the normal uh, Baldelia. Uh, so how you separate Luranium from creeping, creeping Baldelia, uh, which uh, I, I'm not sure how you would go about doing it. Uh, but uh, either, either way, it's going to be an interesting thing. If you find <laughs> any of these with sterons, then it's... it's Whichever it is, it's going to be something interesting. Um, uh, and uh, we're getting near the end here, but uh, just bring in two species that have definitely more pronounced uh, blades to the leaves. Um, uh, although Limicella and Mudrat will start off with completely linear leaves. The first few sort of juvenile leaves will be completely linear. Um, but uh, 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 it soon develops a much more of a sort of rather a paddle shaped uh, leaf shape, which can look a bit like small ranunculus repens, also ranunculus flamula, a, a lesser small one. Um, but there are one or two characters, uh, again, if it's flowering, that's not a problem because yeah, the flowers are very different than the, uh, I think, mudwort is a figwort family. And, uh, and spirit is uh, is a buttercup. So they're very different flowers. Uh, but there are uh, the petiole of, of mudwort is, is cylindrical, whereas uh, lesser spirit has a sort of flattened top to the, uh, <coughs> to the leaf. Uh, and the, again, the coming back to the cross sections, the cross section is quite a useful character uh, in, in the, the mudwort uh, has a, a little central column. Um, but Limicella, another very rare thing in Ireland. Uh, I think it's another protected species. Uh, it's not that common in in, uh, uh, in Britain either, but uh, there was a nice 
Fox C. Um, and of course, uh, the, the, just uh, the, the last species to talk about is water soldier, which produces great big rosettes and they're, they're free floating and they rise to the surface. Fortunately, you don't have much of it in Ireland, it's quite a pest um, in a number of places in Britain. Uh, I think there are a few places in Ireland uh, where it is, uh, but uh, 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 it's something you don't want. It's quite an aggressive and, and sort of pushes everything out. But there's, you're not going to confuse it. it, it uh, it's sort of uh, 30, 40 centimetres in size when it's well grown, and it's got these very sharp spiny teeth on, on, on the edges. So it's uh, quite a sort of distinct uh, 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 and not a difficult group, uh, just uh, the, the, particularly the, the, the sort of the, the, the leaf shape and the um, cross section will take you to, to the answers uh, pretty reliably uh, but without too much difficulty. Um, so I think it's just a leave to say thank you very much for uh, uh, BS5 for organising the, the sort of series uh, with uh, a, a lot of support from National Parks and Wildlife Service that uh, provided quite a lot of funding for, for all the aquatic plant projects, uh, uh, days, workshops and, and sort of webinars that, that uh, 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 have, have been going on over the last few years.